so the big question is ketosis safe? People ask me all the time, is ketosis something that's going to cause me to have issues with my kidneys? Is ketosis a safe diet to go through? Well, I'm going to break this down and hopefully give you some peace of mind because there's a big question and people usually get confused between ketosis and ketoacidosis and they're two totally different things. So let me break it down and hopefully give you a little peace of mind so that you can go into a ketogenic state comfortably without elevating your blood pressure too much being concerned about going into a ketoacidosis state. First off, quick recap of ketosis so that it all makes sense. Ketosis is where you are depriving your body of glucose to the point where your body starts to utilize fats as a source of fuel, turning them into what are called ketone bodies, which are an alternative source of fuel for the body when you're in a form of quote unquote starvation, even if you're not really starving. So what ends up happening is insulin levels drop so much that your body doesn't really need glucose anymore and you end up having ketones. Well, in a normal healthy person, insulin still regulates the level of ketones in the body. Okay, so now let's talk about what ketoacidosis is and how this is totally different because it really makes a difference to understand. When you go into a regular ketogenic state, you have a higher level of acid in the blood. Ketones do make the blood more acidic, but that's really not a bad thing. A little bit of acidity in the blood doesn't hurt anybody. In fact, sometimes it can be a good thing. And normally, a healthy body is going to be able to regulate how many ketones are in the blood so that it doesn't get too acidic. You know, if you're a healthy person and you go into ketosis and you start having too many ketones, your body has mechanisms in place that will say, okay, back it off, slow down on the ketone production. Well, a type 1 diabetic that doesn't produce insulin doesn't have that ability. And that's where ketoacidosis comes into play. This is where there's a big difference. Since insulin is a huge modulator of ketones, without insulin, we have way too much in the way of ketones. So here's how it looks for someone that is insulin dependent, someone that has to take a shot of insulin, a type 1 diabetic. Okay, their glucose levels get really high, but their body isn't producing insulin and they forget to take their shot. Well, the blood sugar stays really, really high, but the cells never get any food. So the cells starve. They're going, what the heck's going on? This guy's not feeding me. Well, what ends up happening is the body says, okay, we're gonna produce ketones because clearly glucose isn't doing the trick. So ketones are produced, high levels end up entering the bloodstream and insulin is still not there. Where the heck is insulin? Come home insulin, but it's not there. So the blood ketones get really, really high. Well, like I mentioned earlier in the video, when we have high levels of ketones, we start to get more acidity in the blood. Well, we end up getting the numbers so high that the acid just becomes overwhelming and you develop a state of diabetic ketoacidosis. Blood becomes viscous, the blood pressure drops, you end up having a lot of vomiting, diarrhea, feeling really, really sick, and a lot of times can end up in a coma or even die. But it's not regular ketosis. Ketoacidosis is something that occurs for people that aren't even in a nutritional state of ketosis, eating a normal diet, just people that aren't taking their insulin or aren't monitoring it closely. So what is the real difference between ketosis and ketoacidosis? Just so that we're clear, so that you have a clear picture that nutritional ketosis is safe, ketoacidosis is a whole different world. Okay, ketosis, you're modulating the level of ketones that are coming in the body. You're controlling it. You're using fat as a source of fuel. Ketoacidosis is a state of starvation due to a lack of insulin. You're starving either way, whether you're in nutritional state of ketosis or not. Remember that insulin is acting to control the feedback loop and communicate with your brain and communicate with the rest of your body to regulate how much of what needs to be in the body. Without insulin, ketone levels will reach as high as 20 millimoles per liter. Now, if you've ever measured your ketone levels in your blood or anything like that, whether you're in ketosis or not, you'll know that that's crazy high. Most people that are just in a regular nutritional state of ketosis, like me, like I'm just going into ketosis because I want to look good, I want to feel good, I want to have the medical benefits, the health benefits, well, I end up finding that I'm usually sitting between two and three millimoles per liter. I've never been able to get myself above six. And if you start finding yourself getting above seven, eight, nine, ten, yeah, you may want to check out some other things because you might actually have diabetes if you're getting that high. So check that stuff out. So now that that's cleared up, and you know that the nutritional state of ketosis isn't dangerous, or at least is not the same as ketoacidosis, one question that comes to mind for me is someone that is type 1 diabetic, would they end up having a higher risk 
of going into ketoacidosis? Well, it's a hard one to answer, but I have a hypothesis and it kind of makes sense. If you are a type 1 diabetic, you're not producing insulin. And if you're not taking your insulin exogenously, you're going to end up in ketoacidosis more than likely anyway, or you're going to end up with some other issue. So being in a nutritional state of ketosis is going to monitor your blood sugar a little bit better. It's going to keep it low. But if you're not taking your insulin, you're probably going to reach that state of ketoacidosis just as fast if you were consuming carbs or if you were not. The fact of the matter is with type 1, you have to be taking insulin. And if you're not taking insulin, that's where you're going to end up. So it's a matter of preference. Do you want your body to utilize ketones when you take your insulin? Or do you want your body to utilize carbs when you take your insulin? But I don't want to go down that rabbit hole and talk to only type 1 diabetics. I just know that question would come up, so I wanted to answer it. So in short, nutritional ketosis is safe. There's nothing that's really showing it's not safe. But I have to make a full disclaimer here when I say I'm not a doctor. I'm a guy on the internet. And I can only tell you what I research and what we look at and what I've experienced myself. But by and large, I stand behind ketosis. We don't know the long-term effects of what it can do. All that's important is that you stay super hydrated because you're still gonna be at a level of dehydration if you're not consuming enough salt or if you're just flat out not drinking enough water. So make sure you're paying attention to that. And as always, if you have questions regarding ketosis or anything like that, make sure you put them in the comment section or make sure you send an email or hit my website so that I know what you're looking at and what you're interested in. Not only does it help me create amazing content, but it helps me get the word out and helps me engage with you and get the right kind of stuff. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I will see you in the next video.